Good weekend to you, young Jordan. Glad to see it. I, I don't actually really see you in these things, but still, nice nonetheless. How's it going? I hope that everything is progressing as it should be, uh, which is to say that you are doing well. I know that you have indicated that the exams are very difficult in Cornell, which I would file squarely under the realm of yes. As you are aware, uh, we put up a crowdfunding initiative for school and we got ourselves a 3D printer from the good folks at MakerBot. And if you want, you can come and play with it when you get back from school. But I would guarantee that there's at least one 3D printer somewhere on the campus of Cornell University. How could there not be at this point? Other than that, everything's just kind of going along with work. I'll talk about upcoming weeks in a little bit as it's going to be crazy but let's get into it. So last week you recommended The Neighborhood and I checked them out and I would say that they're good. I would also say that they're not something that I would check out without a recommendation from someone such as you. Uh, you know, they've got a really nice, tight, clean court sort of sound to them and um, they seem to be enjoying what they're doing. Uh, their songs are about things that I don't usually listen to people sing about, but that's fine. I mean, it's not a judgment against them by any stretch. I'm not so uh, shallow as to believe that everyone should be only singing songs about things I want to sing about. But I also noticed, and I think that this is true, that this is the first group that either of us have recommended to each other who uh, use profanity with any frequency in their songs. And that's not a judgment either. I have nothing against the use of profanity in song uh, at all, particularly. But I did notice that this band is a little bit more noticeable with uh, Jan, F-bombs and such than uh, certainly anyone else that I think we've talked about up to this point. But thanks for the recommendation. It's, it's always good for me to get recommendations that are uh, outside of my mainstream and uh, just to hit me up to what's going on with them youths. So this week I'm going to recommend for you uh, Gillian Welch. And uh, Gillian Welch is actually a double recommendation because wherever Gillian Welch goes, the, uh, I guess, lead guitarist slash assistant vocalist uh, David Rawlings goes because they are very much a unit. And whenever Gillian Welch isn't the name on the album, then it's David Rawlings and Gillian Welch is along for the ride. Uh, this is a little bit different and is perhaps, I don't know, maybe not your cup of tea, but very much in the style of sort of um, American music. It's very, very strongly reminiscent of things that were sung in the, you know, 60s and earlier in this country. But, and here is the key, I think, David Rawlings is perhaps the greatest guitar player currently around. Uh, as I'm sure you'll see when you actually watch him in some of the links that I've left. He is a mind-blowingly good guitarist. He uses a lot of alternate picking style, which to me is just a beautifully intricate style. And the guy is just brilliant. I mean, jaw-dropping. So sometimes the music is very subdued, it's very uh, calm almost, but if you listen to what David Rawlings is doing on the guitar, uh, you just leave scratching your head. Uh, personally, I think he should just be in charge of all guitar from here on out because uh, no one else that I hear usually holds a candle to him in this style, we should say. Uh, there are other folks, of course, playing awesome guitar in other styles. So yeah, uh, check, them, check them out and tell me what you think. Um, if you like this kind of music, we can certainly go down that road because this style of American music is very near and dear to my heart. I happen to think it's some of the, some of the best music ever, ever put to tape. So please, uh, let me know what you think. I'll be glad to hear about it. And that's pretty much it for the recommendation. Yeah, so um, the co next couple of weeks are pretty busy for me. Uh, this week I'll be at work for Monday and Tuesday and then right after I finish AP on Tuesday I'm going to drive to an airport and get on a plane to go down to Georgia 
for the National Association of Biology Teachers Convention, uh, where I'm presenting and I'm hanging out with a lot of folks who I know really well from the biology community and seeing what's going on, and they're going to tell me what they're doing, and I'll tell them what I'm doing. It's going to be a really good time. Uh, I was supposed to go last year, but uh, it happened three days after Sandy, and there was no way to take an airplane anywhere to say nothing of the fact that I had to gut the house. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a long time coming, and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to doing it. Then I'm back, and, but of course it's Thanksgiving, so it's three days back at work, and then Thanksgiving, which we're going to stay here for. I have uh, my dad's coming down and that kind of stuff, and I would imagine you're going to be in town pretty shortly, so uh, let's make sure that we synchronize watches on that. And then the next week, again, it's two days, and then I'm out to uh, a place that I can't mention publicly currently because I'm not supposed to say that I'm going there. So I will tell you about it um, down the road a piece, I suppose. That's uh, the upcoming weeks. Everything around here is pretty copacetic. The kid is just, you know, running wild, but that's uh, the nature of the beast. It was super nice to see um, various Rios family members on video last week, as well as Ms. Geography, and I, I do apologize. I knew I wasn't hearing it correctly, and I hope that she won't take it personally. Uh, she seemed very nice for the fraction of a second in which she offered her greetings. That's it, my friend. A little bit shorter, and, um, you know, we'll just go on from here, and I hope that all is well, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks, I suppose. Oh, I, oh, how could I forget? Once upon a time, I did see the Flaming Lips play. I saw them play with Beck, and uh, they, they opened, and then they were Beck's backing band. That was back in the days of Beck's album, Sea Change, and that was fantastic. And it breaks my heart that uh, perhaps the, co the concert was not sold out, and perhaps was less attended than your Third Eye Blind concert from a while back. But um, I can't say I'm surprised. The kids these days, they don't necessarily appreciate the Flaming Lips. And Wayne Coyne is kind of a jerk. Uh, just look it up. You can see that Wayne Coyne just kind of has a habit of being a jerk. Anyway, that's it. Uh, take that, Wayne Coyne. All right. Take it easy, my friend. Later.